Welcome to Grade 9 Advent Term, Geography. We will be starting with the introduction to plate tectonic. Under this topic, we have three simple and familiar objectives that we will be covering for this first lesson. The objectives are explain the basic components of the Earth, examine facts, which support the theory of plate tectonic and identify major and minor crustal plates. Before we go straight into our lesson, we have a starter activity. So I want everybody to get engaged. There are six statements some of them are true and some of them are false. I want you to choose which one are true and which ones are false. For those that are false, I would like you to make an attempt and come up with what the correct thing should be. Save your responses on a piece of paper and at the end, you're going to go back to it and then you're going to Mark it for yourself. You can evaluate yourself to see which one you got correct and which one you were close to and which one you absolutely got incorrect. You can try that. Whenever we are looking at any topic, not only for our geography, in any of the other subjects, there are terms that you should know, that you should make yourself be familiar with. So as you go through the lesson and these terms should come up, you will be able to understand exactly what the content or what a teacher is actually referring to. The image that is in front of you is the structure of the earth. And you have seen this before because in grade eight, we did look at the structure of the earth and the makeup of the structure of the earth. We're just going to quickly recap these terms. The crust. The crust is that layer that we live on. It is the outermost part of the earth. Then we have the mantle, which is the thickest. The mantle is known as the thickest layer. And this is where you have the semi-molten material. Now, the core, the core is the center of the earth. Let's focus on the atmosphere, the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. Now, these four systems make up the earth. Take a second and breathe in. Take a deep breath. The hair that you're breathing in comes from our atmosphere. The atmosphere, what is the atmosphere? Some of you might ask, but the atmosphere is a thin layer of gases surrounding the planet. The atmosphere serves many functions. Can you think of any? Do you know that one of the main functions is that it protects us from UV radiation and holds in it to warm the planet's surface? It also contains oxygen and carbon dioxide that all living things need. Now the pie chart is showing you the combination of gases in the atmosphere. Let's look at the little sphere. The little sphere is the Earth's crust and the upper part of the mantle. So the Earth's crust and the upper part of the mantle make up the little sphere. The little sphere is consists of solid material from the surface of the planet dung. This is also referred to as the Earth's crust. The little sphere is constantly changing. So it is changing because of the shift in the tectonic plates. The plate movements are very slow and we do not feel the change unless 
there is an earthquake or a volcanic eruption. Our next term is the hydrosphere. Hydro means water. Hydrosphere is a total amount of water on a planet. A planet's hydrosphere can be liquid, vapor, or ice. Liquid water exists in the form of oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, wells, just to name a few. Vapor, which is most visible as clouds and fog. The frozen part, which is made up of ice. Now, let's look at the term biosphere. Bio means life. The biosphere is made up of the parts of the earth where life exists. We are part of the biosphere, from the plants that we grow for food to the pets that we keep. Okay, children. Our next term is continental drift. Think about the term continental drift. We are continental and we have drift. In grade eight, we look at continents when we study land masses. So we already know what is, con what is a continent. So a continent is a large land mass. Think about the term drift. If something is drifting, it is actually moving apart. So when you put these two terms together, we get land masses moving apart. So the term continental drift is the movement of continental masses over the Earth's surface. According to a scientist by the name of Alfred Wedgnam, all the continents were once together as a supercontinent known as the Pangaea. Drifting of the continents took place and today the Earth looks this way with our seven beautiful continents. Moving on to our other term, seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading is a process that occurs at mid-ocean ridges where new oceanic crust is formed through volcanic activity and then gradually moves away from the ridge. Lastly, we will look at the term plate tectonic. Now, plate tectonic is a theory that studies the movement of plates that makes up the crust. The Earth's surface is made up of large layers of rocks that are always moving, causing earthquakes and volcanoes. Plate tectonic helps to explain the creation of the different features that we see on the Earth's surface. Have you ever thought of a reason or reasons why plates move? We will look at this now. Okay, children, we are moving along. We just examined some of the key terms that you might need to know for this lesson. So we want to find out now what caused these plates to move or why do plates move? All the land on earth floats, but it doesn't float on water. It floats on the mantle of semi-liquid rock just beneath earth's crust. The mantle is solid in its center, but soft on its upper boundary. Like a thick liquid, the upper mantle has convection currents, which makes the plates move. 
So what did you pick up from that? The convection current is what actually caused it to move, that caused the plates to move. And where is this convection current coming from? It's coming from the mantle. Now we will look at the facts which support the theory of plate tectonics. I would like you to find a world map. Well, if you can, look for a world map that is actually showing you the seven continents. And take your time, you get your scissors, take your time and cut carefully along the boundaries of each of those continents. When you finish cutting them, then take your time again and assemble them as if you are doing a puzzle. And you will see that these pieces will fit together like a puzzle. So that is one indication that actually shows that all of these continents were once together and then they end up drifting or moving apart. Another evidence we can look at is there are rocks of similar type, age, formation, and structure that you will find in Southeast Brazil and South Africa. One other evidence is you have identical species of land-based fossil. So these land-based fossil have been found on the continents that are today separated by wide ocean so think about that the rocks on the ocean floor become steadily older with distance from the middle of the ocean fresh volcanic rocks form at mid ocean ridge we are wrapping up our lesson number one by looking at the major and the minor crustal plates. Now we are talking about the global distributions of plate boundaries. There are seven major plates and several minor ones. A simple way for you to remember the major plates, just think about the continent, the name of the continents, because most of these plates their names, their name after the continents. Most plates have both continental and oceanic materials. The large plates are the Pacific, North American, South American, Eurasian, African, Indo-Australian, and Antarctic. The smaller ones will include the Nazca, the Cocos, the Caribbean, and the Philippines plate. Now, we have come to the end of lesson number one. What you need to remember and understand that the earth is changing. It is changing because it is constantly moving. And this is what the theory of plate tectonic is trying to get us to understand. If you have any questions concerning anything that we have discussed today in lesson number one, you can send me a message or you can comment and I will get back to you.